Hello friends. It occurred to me that I have completely forgotten that I have a whiteboard. So let's actually draw something. Today I am making a sort of small side table, but it won't have legs. Instead it will hook onto a balcony railing. So it's an outdoor piece and it will be made from oak. Alright, all the parts are cut to their rough dimensions, I'll just let them rest while I'm having lunch before I start planing them. I really should let them rest for a bit longer to make sure all the tension has been relieved, but I don't have a lot of workshop time this week, so I really want to get them dimensioned today. All the parts are taken to dimension and I'm going to start with the most crucial of the joints which is the sides that will tan on into the upright. I'm feeling here to align the front edges because the backs will be through tenons and be trimmed off to be flush with the upright so it's more important that they are even in the front.
So I'm going to make a mortise now that goes in between these two so that I can insert the back rail like that and uh, I'm, I'm keeping this part in place so that the tenons will support the mortise walls while I'm chopping to prevent splintering and blowout on the inside of the mortise. Alright, here's a dry fit of that joinery. Everything seems to be coming together so far. And I'm thinking about the order of operations now. I'm excited to make the curve that will go somewhere here. But I probably should finish the shelf part, the actual table, before I decide on the final curvature and the vertical placement of that piece, just so I will get the visual balance right. So now I think what I'm going to do is cut the front rail to length and dovetail it into the sides like that, and then move on to making grooves in the front and back rails and mounting the slats. It occurred to me that I should do the groove here before I cut the pins because once there are dovetail sockets here it will be uh, much harder to hold on to the piece. Now to get the length for the front rail I need to transfer that directly from this assembly so I have this set up with a clamp on another clamp to keep this one at 90 degrees it was just slightly slightly off so I want to use the front stretcher to sort of force it back into place so I'm going to clamp this onto here, get it centered, and then mark off the inside of the tail so I get the correct socket depth for the dovetails. I am going for protruding joinery, something maybe Mike Pekovic inspired, but I will trim these back a little bit. I will also take down this surface slightly so that uh, the tails protrude as well. It is unfortunate that uh, the groove is right where that pin is. I'll just have to plug that uh, after glue up. I think it'll be okay. Yeah, let's cut the other joint and then put it together. Now it's time to cut these slats to length. They will go in here and make up the actual table surface. So I'll just trim them to length and then cut some tenons on the end of them that will protrude through the edge here.
And now I'm going to play in a profile on the front edge and uh, recess the surface a little bit so the tails and tenons end up protruding. Right, it was kind of difficult deciding where this curved stretcher should be placed, if it should be like down here or something somewhere up here. In the end I decided to just ask the future owner of this piece and we decided it should be right about this height. I really think it does look best down there, I'm not sure why, I feel like it makes the design a bit more focused maybe. It doesn't draw the attention up and away from the main thing. It sort of keeps the eye lingering across different details down in this area. So yeah, I made uh, a couple of blocks to, to get the spacing the same on both sides. Now I'm just gonna clamp it in place and mark where the tenons intersect the uprights. That's the last of the mortises cut right there and uh, to lighten up the look I'm going to put the same uh, curve as the stretcher, cut that out of here. Nothing too precise, just something that looks good I think that will be quite nice. And now all that's left is to chamfer all the edges and the corners of the joinery. Before gluing up I will put some finish on the slats because uh, some parts of them will be a bit hard to reach after it's all assembled. I will also put some finish here in the groove. I've taped off the tenons so the oil won't interfere with the glue and uh, I'm probably just going to do one coat here and uh, maybe two and then the parts that are still exposed after assembly will get a few more coats when I put the oil on everything else. And time for glue up. I'll be using polyurethane glue as it's more water resistant than normal wood glue, at least that's what the bottle claims. And also it's a slightly longer open time will 
help with getting this together. It's uh, not that many pieces, but uh, everything has to come together at once. So, uh, yeah, let's go. Okay, so the glue up went well. I have cleaned away all the squeeze out. I have planed down the protruding joinery on the back so it can sit flush against the balcony railing. Of course, on the front and sides, the joinery is proud and chamfered. I plugged the little gaps from the groove here. Looks almost like there was never a gap in the first place. Time to put some oil on it. I did uh, two coats of oil, didn't seem to absorb any more after that, so now I'm going to buff it with some beeswax to give it a bit more shine and water resistance. Right, the wax is on and the final thing I need to do is attach these hooks so it can hang onto the balcony railing. And there we go. One Pekovic inspired balcony railing hanging side table shelf thing complete all that remains now is to deliver it thanks for watching